What's up, y'all? I'm back. <laughs> I've been away for too fucking long. I am so excited to be back. Welcome back to the Analytical Eye Show. As you know, it's your boy, Javier. You know what we do first. We always got to cheers before we start talking. I am excited to be back. I've been away for too fucking long. Too long, man. I've been away. I've been away from y'all too long. I appreciate y'all watching this episode. Um, I've been gone, but I haven't really been gone. I've been busy. Uh, I finally graduated, y'all. I finally graduated with my bachelor's degree in film of science at Folsom University. That day was amazing. Oh my god, I I appreciate. Oh my god, it was just. It was amazing. Javier Artrell Vassal Rutherford. Javier is receiving a course director award for Project and Portfolio 3 film. It was amazing. I finally graduated. I've been talking about it for so long. Um, uh, I, 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 I moved apartments. I had to downgrade from a two bedroom to a one bedroom. Uh, what else have I been doing since I've been gone? Um, I'm in the master's program. I'm now getting my entertainment business degree. Um, side note, I apologize if y'all hear any background, uh, anything in the background. That's my dogs. Um, as y'all know, I got seven dogs. But uh, the mom that birthed the seven, the, uh, the, the puppies had an additional set. Now, she, now she, she just gave birth again. So my house is pretty full right now. <laughs> um, that's another thing. Uh, so where was I? So I finally graduated. I'm in the master's program. Um, uh, what else am I doing? Uh, I moved. Uh, dog at the the puppies. Um, uh, what what else have I done? Oh, I have finally been having a lot more fun. Um, I went to see Jill Scott for the first time in Savannah, Georgia. That was amazing. Um, what else have I done? Um, I have also gone to see Janet Jackson for the first time. Oh my God, the, the uh, Together Again tour was amazing. Um, and then I saw recently just for the first time, and I'm proud to say that he's the first comedian I've ever seen live, Chris Tucker on his le the, uh, the Legend Tour. And that was hands down amazing, funny. Um, but yeah, a lot has changed, y'all. Um, this, this episode ain't really much, not much to bring forth um, we're not really going to be talking about anything today just because I just want you guys to know that I'm good and I'm back um, a lot of struggle and triumph um, I haven't really let y'all in on a whole lot just because I like to keep a lot of things private um, and I, I only want I only am going to tell you what I want you to know about me um, there's a lot of things that, not that are secretive, but just things that I don't want or feel comfortable sharing with everyone. Um, because outside of this show, outside of my career and everything that I have going on, excuse me, Zoo, sorry, excuse me, I want to be able to be transparent with you and be able to talk to you and tell you, and, and not just tell you, tell you, but share with you my life experiences things that I see from my perspective, but from somebody else's perspective, from somebody else's perspective, and how those can be um, intertwined together. That's the that's the main goal for this show, is to talk about things that meet the eye daily. Um, and honestly, all I gotta say right now, y'all, is get your education. Education is important. Education is the foundation of, hey, so can you please stop, my lord, please? Oh, don't grab at me. And she's pregnant too. So I have mom just gave birth and the daughter is not pregnant too. So long story, y'all, long story. I'm not trying to be a breeder. This is not something that happened. I went back home right after my graduation and I had some sad news with one of my my grandmothers. Um, um, and I want to say this before I go back because I just segued into that. Um, please, for anybody that has cancer, um, please love on your loved ones. My boo's brother is going through uh, stage four lung cancer right now. 
my grandmother um, has had uh, kidney failure for a long time now, but apparently it's developed into uh, stage four kidney cancer. Um, and then my sister, she's been having seizures. Oh my God, just please take care of your health. Health is number one, y'all. This, it's, it's imperative that you guys go get your health checked out, especially for as black folks. Um, we need to make sure our health is on point. We need to make sure our health is on point. Hold on, hold on. I, I'm always stepping off camera real quick because I'm always trying to check something. Just give me one second, y'all. Hold on. Okay, I'm back. Sorry. As, as being the executive producer, the, the, the director, and the host, and the editor, and everything, I got to make sure all of these different facets, lighting, and backdrop, and and camera view, everything's on point and things are on point. So, and I'm handling a whole lot. So, <laughs> so just forgive me. So sometimes I may step off camera, but I'm gonna come right back. Um, but just please make sure you take care of your health. Health is number one. Health is important, especially in America. America, I feel I don't know statistically, but I just feel America is one of the most unhealthy countries out there because we got so many fast food joints. We got so much unhealthiness here in America that when you go to other countries, there's, there's the, the educational system for food-wise is much healthier. I just saw on uh, uh, Twitter not that long ago um, how South Korea, I think it's in South Korea, they're, the portions at school where it's actually cooked food from scratch and they portion control it, in, in a w but not in a way like that is bad for you, but it's enough that you still get full and they give you Quantable, uh, you you basically are eating for your nourishment and not being malnourished. Here in America, a lot of us are malnourished and in malnourished, and it doesn't just come from eatery. It comes from lack of exercise or lack of getting up and going about your day, eating to fill your body and not just overeating. Because right now I'm watching six hundred my six hundred pound life for the first time ever. I've always seen episodes and things like that, but it's just amazing to me that. Wow, you know what I'm saying? And if you look at their stories, a lot of it doesn't just come away. They just started eating. It's kind of like um, a drug addict or alcohol, alcoholic. Um, it stems from a sometimes physical abuse, emotional abuse, uh, mental abuse, or just things in their childhood. Um, where they, it's a coping mechanism. But just make sure you're taking care of your health when it comes to food, when it comes to... Sometimes medicine ain't always what you need to be taking. Sometimes it's going to see a therapist. Sometimes it's holistic medication. A holistic, uh, me um, or yeah, you can say holistic medication, but holistic medical journeys or, or ideas. Um, a lot of times here in America, it's always in the form of capitalism. So if they could profit off of it, so if they, if they, you know, they'll, they'll, you know, they'll do that through religion. They'll do that through your food. They'll do that through med the medical system. They'll do that through. Um, any way, shape, or form that can be done, especially if you can make a dead, pre you can receive a dead president off of it. So make sure you do what's right for you, and and please get health is number one. Listen to your doctors, be your advocate, because there's been countless of times that I've seen, especially with my mom, um, where I witnessed firsthand as a young boy that her doctor didn't. My mom would express just dis uh, uh, di uh, discontent with her about something she was feeling with her health and the doctor would just brush it off you don't have to find what's find the same color as you but find the right doctor for you um and shout out to the doctor that's on uh, my 600 pound life dr niles arden because he's an amazing doctor that man he's just wonderful um but yeah that's what i've been doing in my life in a sense just you know catching up on shows things like that just getting back into my mojo um, I've been dealing with a lot myself internally as far as um, um, just trying to find my happiness. And that's a struggle for me right now. Um, and one of the things that uh, I will say this, I don't work at TSA anymore. Woo -woo. Um, you know, I did that for a year, about a year and a half, and I just was unhappy and I just called it quits. Um, I just knew that it was time was up. Um, but... I segue because I was talking about, you know, my, I started talking about the dog and then, you know, going back home and stuff like that. Um, but I want to get back to the education aspect of it all. Education is number one key, just like your health. Um, I say education for you is the same thing as health is. It's very imperative and it's paramount 
that you continue education. And I'm not just talking about going to school. You can educate yourself by traveling. You can educate yourself by going to school. You can educate yourself by going to an old folks home and listen to those ladies and those men spit to you about the knowledge of the world and the and the experiences and the things that they've gone through and the things that they've experienced and things like that. Huh. All right, got to make sure the backdrop was good. Um, it, you know, you have it, it. It's not just oh, go to school because not everybody is built for school. Not everybody is built to travel. Not everybody is built to to do things, but. I, for me, my motto is I and, and, I, and I, I ain't gonna lie. I started. I this is one of the, you know when you go to a job interview, you always say the right thing at the right time all the time. You know it's gonna get you that job. One thing I've always said any time I was either filling out an application or applying for a job was that I always find something new to learn because there's always uh, something we can do to learn. And I started to say it so much because I was saying as a, not, I, I don't know if cliche is the right word, but I was just saying it because it sounded good to the employer to try to get the job. But I started to really, as I kept saying it throughout all the employments that I've had, because um, I've had about 10, 11 jobs, <laughs> and believe it or not, and I've gotten fired about 10, 11 times, <laughs> but nonetheless, we ain't going to go there. But, <laughs> um, but I, what I, what I, I kept, it's like an affirmation for me now, where literally I find every and every little thing that I do something to learn. Even if it's a bad experience, even if it's something I don't, I hate about it, even if it's something that I don't want to do, or I don't feel like doing for that day, or I'm unhappy with it, or I feel stagnant in it, or I feel complacent, or if I feel joyous, or if I feel like it's progressing and it's making, it's, it's making headway in my career moves, or anything like that, it's... I always try to find something new to learn because you can learn something every single day. There's 7 billion people on this earth, which means there's 7 billion different ways to speak, 7 different billion ways to think, 7 billion ways to, to love, 7 billion ways to, 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 to go about life. You know, We have over, what is it, 5,000 different languages in the world and counting. And that's just the ones that we know of. There's countless of historic historian books mathematic books and and, 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 and and knowledge and wisdom and trust and love out there so there's not just one different kind so don't just think that you have to live in these four walls like I've said in previous my previous episode entitled the four walls you gotta get out of your community experience life that life man that's something deep and that does go through education. And like I said, education isn't just about books or going to school and getting a degree and getting putting yourself into debt. I've seen a, a lot of times with this new millennium, I mean, this new age is that they're not willing to put We're not willing to put ourselves into debt just to get an education. We gonna travel, man. That same amount of money I could put into that, I could put in the travel and go learn about different cultures and their way of life and get out of this American way of life into something different, something that is. Sorry, my nose is itchy. I hope I don't have anything. If I got something in my nose, y'all gonna see it first because it's on camera. But sorry, if something is in my nose, and I, I think I may be having a bad reaction to something. Sorry. Um, being down here in Florida, my, my I, I had never really had allergies before, but down here I get bit on my mosquitoes, nose is itching, and this, this weather is just it's, it's so naturistic out here. I thought Colorado was on one, but this one is on another. I think it's just because we were surrounded by the ocean and the water and everything. Nonetheless, I digress back to what I need to be talking about. Because <laughs> you see, I always something always gets me to then, ah, I'm off somewhere else in, in no man's land. Went to somewhere like, where the hell did you go? How did you get there? But anywho. Um, but yeah, guys, I, I, you, you got to experience life. And, and open up your, your eyesight, your mind. You know, one thing that when you go, there's a there's a doctor called the ear the ear throat your the ear throat and nose specialist. Um, now the same thing applies to your mind, eyes, and heart. For me, not in since there's a doctor out there, but when you put the reason why there's an ear throat and nose specialist because all of those things run together. Your mind, your eyes, and your heart run together. You want to know why? Because those that's how you visualize. That's how you feel and emote. And you got to find your happiness. You know what I'm saying? This journey being down here, 
I came down to Florida in 2018. I think I may have mentioned that before. I started school, but the constant thing with me was struggling with school and work-life balance. Um, and then at one point, I just got stagnant and had to stop school. And I stopped school for a year and a half, and I hated that. But I wasn't focused on it anymore. I, you know, I acted like I was going to school and, you know, doing what I was supposed to do, and I wasn't, you know. And I stopped for a year and a half. And then back in July of this year, I finally got back on track, and I said, I got to go back and finish where I started. I came down here to Florida for a reason. I didn't come down here. I came to build a life, yes, but I didn't come down here for the dogs. I didn't come down here for my boo. I didn't come out here for my the friends that I do have, even the ones that, you know, have turned into acquaintances I don't talk to anymore. I came down here for a specific reason. Did I say that right? Specific. Okay, because so I sometimes say p- Pacific. Sorry, to make sure I catch myself. I did Specific. <laughs> I, you know, it's all about, I had to get focused. You know what I'm saying? I had to make sure I came back to the reality of how you came down here for this reason. You know, because I kept getting lost and I got to have this job. I have this job. I was struggling to pay bills, struggle this, that, and the third. And being on financial aid with the government, um, I finally now know that I had a living expense because all this time I didn't realize I did, but I, you know, um, but the silver lining is that at least I don't have to pay that money back. But all the struggling and the turmoil that I've had to gone through, go through, just to get to the point where I'm at today, I'm appreciative of it. But man, at one point in time, y'all, I had three jobs, you know. Um, but I'm back and I'm happy. I got my. I'm a bachelor now. I've always been a bachelor, but I'm officially a bachelor. <laughs> I have a bachelor's degree, full Sail university, full Sail nation. It's a wonderful school, y'all. If you're an art person, you love film, graphic design, um, cinematography, um, uh, gaming, anything like that, this is a good school to check it out. Um, but yeah, guys, make sure you are finding out what makes you happy and educate yourself. Find any way possible to learn something new. Even if it's out of your wheelhouse or the box that you are in, don't put yourselves in a box. Do not put yourselves in that four square box four square box of your community of your mind of your heart of your soul expand your horizons expand don't be acute be obtuse be bellicose be big and boisterous allow yourself to live out loud because you only get this one life and there are going to be times where it's going to be up and down roller coasters and you don't want that to 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 hinder yourself to what you can offer to yourself it's very imperative that you strive for all that you can within yourself. You know what I'm saying? Um, this life is crazy. Um, and one thing that this these last couple of months have taught me is that I, I don't want to be in it alone. But I don't want to be in it unhappy. And I don't want to be in it fully stressed out all the time or depressed or, or, or sad. You know what I'm saying? Um... But I'm I I today I am happy where I am. I'm making a lot of strides and struggle uh, uh, strides or sh- is it strides I think it's yeah strides, um, and and trying to find my true happiness because to be honest with you, for a lot of the time that I've been doing this show and even before, I haven't always been happy. You know what I'm saying? Just because I'm always constantly doing, and even a lot of di- recently, even even in recent time, I am not too happy. But I'm trying every day to build that confidence and that love and that respect and honor within myself for myself. Um, and you know, just know I want you to say this: when it comes to the educational aspect, when it comes to learning more, it doesn't always have to be a financial thing. Um, I know we live in a capitalist. Technically, it would be a capitalist world. It's not even a capitalist country. Um, but try to find things even within your own town, your own city to do. Um, but explore, you know. I am amazed and happy that I don't have kids. Although I have dogs now, I don't have kids. Because I can go and do things. I can go experience life head on. You know, I can be imp- impulsive if I want to. I can... You know, even though I got the money, if I wanted to move, I could. You know, you know, I probably end up on the street, but hey, I'll be happy probably on the street because hey, it's just me. You know, with what now? What 
15, 16 dogs and counting. Mm. And don't get me wrong, I'm not keeping all these damn dogs. I, you know, it's, it's too much, too much. <laughs> but make sure you're doing for you. You know what I'm saying? You're not living someone else's life. You're living your life. Um, what's next for me? I feel for me though, um, and the only reason I say it like that because I'm thinking about like hmm, what questions I'm sure somebody would ask me. In this current stance, what's next for me is just continue my education. I have this first master's degree that I need to complete now um, with entertainment uh, entertainment business. Um, the next step up is um, I it was supposed to be two masters and a PhD, um, but I think it's going to be end up being three masters because I don't know the music side of the business, so I need to get probably get my music business degree, so that'll be a master's degree, and then my film production degree, which is a master's, masters, all three of those masters, so three masters in three years, and then after that I'm going to find a doctorate's program to get my like general management, general business degree, so I can know about like stocks investments. I IRAs and retirement hedge funds and things like that and how to run a actual multi conglomerate incorporated business and enterprise. So that's my goals. Um, so I probably have about maybe I think I don't know how much long a doctor's degree is, but probably about another maybe six years to go maybe. But even then, I'm still gonna be acting and writing and trying to produce and direct and sing and act i have a very big audition coming up this upcoming week that i'm excited for and i can't wait i'm just praying i get it um i'm a little nervous i have a lot of doubt within myself um which i've been i need to get i've been uh over the years i've been trying to push past that even without self telling myself, but just self telling myself, it's the, you know, a correction, without self telling myself verbally, but through my actions, that I am worth it and I can go after it and I can actually get it if I go, if I truly work hard for it. Um, but if you truly work hard for something, you can get it. You can get it, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Um, this show for me is all about, you know, it's a, it's a journey for me, you know. I feel like I started the show so abruptly because I over the years I went from it being called I think I've called it the the Sunday sessions, light of the Sunday sessions to then finally figuring out the name, which was the Analytical Eye show, and then I felt like I was being very uh, not authentic and trying to be in, uh, be this show be. It was a lot of uh, still in development and working. And then finally when it came out abruptly, I started with the Ice Cube show. I mean the Ice Cube episode. And then that just kept going on and on and on and on. And I was as dedicated as much. And it was, you know, here and there. And then finally I started to notice that I was... Um, some of the topics that I were discussing, I really wanted to discuss. But I really didn't know what had honest, um, impactful things to say. I was saying things out of my ass a lot and things like that. And so I want to take that time to apologize in any effort, in any stance where you feel like I've talked out my ass or and that I have. Because there's countless times where I go back and I'm like, I really did say that bullshit. Really? I did say that. Yeah, I did. Um, but I'm human and I make mistakes. Um, but from going this point forward, I'm going to be dedicated to the show and give it all I got because I want it to work because I want to spark conversations. I want to talk about things that meet the eye daily. And that's the motto is to, we're not talking about the big lavish things like big cars, big fancy houses because I don't even have that. <laughs> I want to talk about things that are the everyday struggle. I want to talk about things that matter in the world. Talk about things that are affecting everyday people. Just, just affecting everyday folks. Just, you know, my neighbor, affecting my neighbors, affecting, you know, just, just talk about it and, and and how to deal with it, you know what I'm saying? Or, you know, you know, that that's the goal of this show. And oh, I'm sorry. My apologies. <laughs> Got a lot going on. I've been long hours and stuff. Um But I wanna maybe at some point bring in another co host or bring in someone who can we can have some honest real conversations together. That's the goal of this show. Um but I am just happy. 
uh, at this stance that I finally have graduated. It was like a weight lift off my shoulders because I've been distracted for so long, you know, and now I feel like I'm starting to get a little more laser focused. Um, I still have a lot of struggles that I go through on a day-to-day -day basis, even now, but the most important thing for me is that I continue to make strides, continue to put one foot in front of the other, and if I fall, I get back up. Um, but yeah, y'all, I'm back, and I'm not going nowhere. I am appreciative of all the love from my love village. I appreciate my boo. My boo's an amazing, amazing, uh, that, that, oh my God, my boo. Mm. Mm. But anywho, <laughs> woo, my boo baby. Mm -mm -mm. Yes, mm -hmm. I get it in. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but let me not spill too much of my business. But no, um, yeah, I thank y'all so much for hanging in there with me. Um, I got something else in development, so please keep a lookout on that. I will be starting back up the line of the Sundays with some more good music. Um, and we're going to have a lot more fun. You know what I'm saying? We're going to have a lot more fun on this, this show. Um... One other thing I want to start is another this set another one of these segments, um, and it's just gonna be nothing too big or drastic. But I always want to give you guys a fun fact before I leave this episode, um, and I want y'all to know: Did you know that you can actually get paralyzed from sitting on the toilet too long? Now, I don't know when this was. I think it was back in 2013. Uh, from what I read, it was from 2013. There was a boy in China, I believe, that sat on the toilet for 30 minutes on his phone, and he became handicapped. Now, the reason why I say this happened in 2013, because when I looked it up, that's what it said. The article came out in like 2013 or something like that. And um, But it's now going viral all of a sudden. Or I think it was somewhere in... I know it was within the last like decade, though. Let's just put it there. Um, but for all of a sudden, I mean, all of a sudden now, it's becoming a viral thing. Like, this boy sat on a toilet for 30 minutes on his phone, and he became paralyzed. And, then I, and I ain't going to lie, I was on the toilet. <laughs> Here's the sad part. I was on the toilet when I was reading that shit, and I was on Twitter. And I'm like, oh, and then I guess what? I got up so quick, flushed the toilet, turned on the light. I was like, oh, heck no. Nah. <laughs> had to make sure I could still walk. But that amazes me. Now, that's just a little fun fact to throw out there for y'all. Um, every episode, um, I'm going to try to throw out something out there just for y'all to, you know, just spark something on top of the, ep the, ep the, the the topic for the show. And, you know, you can guys can comment below. We can have some more conversations and fun stuff. I want to hopefully start to see you guys' responses and stuff like that. Um, and then, but yeah, that was something else. That, that was just something that blew my mind. And another huge announcement. This show will not be on uh, airing on Sundays anymore. We're going to be airing on Wednesdays from this point forward because I want to start to give you guys something to get you through the week. We always have stuff that that shows on the beginning of the week or the end of the week, but nothing that gets you through the middle of the week. Gets you through the week and gives you some something, you know, because I understand how it is when you are you have a Monday through Friday job. No matter if you are working Monday through Friday or working Saturday through, what is it, Wednesday or whatever like that. Um, or no, uh, yeah, Saturday through the Wednesday or whatever your hours are where you're either working overnight, the, great, the first shift, second shift, third shift, overnight shift. I've worked a lot of that stuff. Um, so, But I want to give you guys some encouragement, something to spark your idea and, and some entertainment throughout the middle of your week. Something that you can that will help you get through the rest of the week if you feel like you can't make it through the rest of the week or just something that will just... Let me let me turn him on because I already know I was going to be talking about some shit. Even if he, you know, talking out his ass or I feel like he is, I can put on some, put him on, you know. <laughs> that, but the goal of this show is to ignite and intensify the flame of conversations around the world in all languages. Um, so I pray that I can do that, um, and not, not just for my black folks, but for everybody out there that wants to watch and, and, and be entertained and 
be educated by me um, because I like to think of myself somewhat like a teacher in a sense of just giving another analytical eye view. You know, so that's the goal. But I thank y'all. I'm finally back. I ain't going nowhere. I just had to take a long hiatus just to get some of my life back into get my puzzle puzzled. How about that? <laughs> But I thank y'all so much for watching this episode. I love y'all. I missed y'all so much. I can't wait to to start talking about further things with y'all and further topics. This is a, this is honestly an unscripted show. I usually have topics to talk about and some pointers that I try to hit on, but this is really, truly, honestly unscripted, um, and it's gonna stay that way. Raw, honest, downright. Brutally honest, we're not gonna. Sh I'm not gonna sugarcoat nothing with y'all, and I don't expect y'all to sugarcoat nothing with me. I'm not gonna be judgmental of y'all, and don't be judgmental of me because, man, again, we're all human beings. And one minute I may say something, and the next minute I may change it up, or I may backtrack it, may apologize about it, or not apologize, depending on how I feel, or if you know something is coming about. That's just you know, as humans, I'm a human being, and that's how I love to operate. So I want to continue that. And continue these discussions with y'all. I thank y'all so much. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Avier Vassal. You can follow the show at The Analytical Eye Show on Facebook and Instagram. And on um, uh, Twitter, it's I Analytical. We're trying to get that changed around. Um, and then, oh, also on TikTok. 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 You can follow me at Avier Vassal. I thank y'all so much, Love Billis, for your love and support. I thank y'all to anyone out there that watches this show or hey, gives it to your mom. Hey, mom, this boy got something to say. I really appreciate it for the all the followers, the subscribers, to everyone. Um, and I can't wait for y'all to see me on this journey even more. And, uh, and, and we're going to have a lot of fun this time around. And uh, happy holidays. I hope you had a great Thanksgiving. I know Christmas is coming up. But we're going to continue to discuss. So be out for the next episode that will be coming in about 48 hours from now. So I thank y'all so much for watching this episode. I am back better than ever before. Peace and love, Love Village. And also, take some time out to enjoy the analytical IV. Thank you so much, Love Village. Peace and love. Mwah. Cheers. The Analytical Eye Show is presented by Analytical Eye Productions, a AAVR company.